Hi guys, this is Breaker, and I am casting everybody's favorite Terran, Forsaken XE. And I want to say what is my favorite matchup, definitely, um, without a doubt. I give you all, spawning is our Zerg in the lower right hand corner, the opponent of our very capable Masters Terran. I give you all, Seplo. Interesting name. You can find them all over the EU server, that is to say, interesting names. Upper left hand corner. Of course, you all know who he is. He's won quite a few games already versus Masters and Grandmasters Zergs alike. His name is Forsaken XE. The map we are on today is Belshire Vestige. Um, I want to say it's actually, you know, it's, it's quite susceptible to run bys for both Lings and Hellions. I mean, we just see how wide open this is. And for Terran, this can actually be quite difficult to wall off against. Um, I want to say Terran is probably at a slight disadvantage unless they feel like making a full barracks or supply depot wall off right here. <clears throat> but of course, don't let that discourage you from being a better player. Third, of course, is also extremely wide open. Just look at this. I mean, there's there's so many different attack paths that Zerg can really take to get in here. They can take this route maybe throw some links in here and uh, maybe use the rest of their links to kind of like reroute or cut off reinforcements pull some bane links here in this direction and it would actually be quite strong to do or they could just pull up a bunch of links bane links or whatever and then just run them straight at the third of course um hatcheries because the third hatch would actually be one of the best things to put right there uh been uh, wow I'm sorry guys, I just woke up so I, I can't really pull myself together right now. Um, the best kind of move we would see from Terran, and especially from Forsaken XE, I think this wouldn't be entirely unusual to see, is um, we'll see some kind of a timing with Hellions running by and some Reapers, and they will basically huddle themselves back here, maybe more preferably right about here, and uh, try and get a sour engagement point for all the Lings that we see Seplo sending at him. Eventually. Now, I'm a little curious to... Yes, Seplo did actually see that barracks. Um, I kind of read into this now the way that uh, Forsaken kind of opens this way is it's not... His goal is not really to hide the Reaper. His goal is really to just kind of get it out faster and try and get it to move to his opponent's base just a little bit faster. But I don't know. I'm a little curious with the present positioning with that we have from this barracks. Is it going to be able to just leap over here, then jump down here, and then head directly over to Seplo's base? Let's find out. No, it's stuck taking the long route. I think it could have been a better result for him to go ahead and uh, place it at the choke, directly above the choke. Reaper is out. It looks like we had a 15 hatch, 15 pull opener from Seplo. He is actually, even till now, he has not taken gas. So this can be relatively dangerous. Um, you know, I want to say definitely. Did he, did he even see gas? coming from his opponent. He's forced to pull drones to deal with this. Yes, he did see a gas. He knew there was a potential danger. And now we have a second Reaper joining the fray. Oh my. And this poor, poor drone. Looks like he's going to be in a bit of trouble. By the way, if you guys are wondering why my uh, client has these funny characters in it, it's because this is the uh, Chinese client, not the Korean client got a couple of reapers here i think now would be like oh my god i think forsaken doesn't quite realize the golden opportunity that he has to go in and actually harass his opponent you know he doesn't have link speed it looks like they had some kind of lag issue and right now we actually see seplo oversaturated some kind of a mistake coming from him um he's actually not even making any links at this point to actually deal with uh the reapers i think he's basically doing something that might be reminiscent of a classic Wings of Liberty opener. He's as natural as actually making another queen. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, he has to try and spread creep, connect creep, if you will. But, altogether, you know, I want to say, right now, I think uh, Forsaken's in a relatively strong position. Given that, you know, his opponent actually hasn't tried to put out an offensive, this is a uh, kind of a timely third, if you will. Kind of, yeah. A little earlier than what you'd like to get. But of course, um, we do have, you know, this is kind of that reminiscent classical Wings of Liberty play, but not a four queen opener, not a six queen opener. I myself, since I was in Diamond League, was actually a huge fan of the six queen opener. Because, uh, you actually 
you, you know, you had four surplus queens to spread creep with, and as you were heading towards the late game, you could actually use them for transfuses on more critical units like Ultralisks or Broodlords. Now, I've heard of some extremely radical uh, movements to actually... Not movements, but some really... I don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Radical play to actually spread creep faster. And um, I actually like these plays. Like I've actually seen Vortex take a hatchery. He'll, what he'll do is he'll probably build it like right here. He'll pull two queens. He'll build a hatchery. Then it, while it's building, he'll hit the escape button to cancel it. And there will be a little bit of creep left over where he can use his queens to spread creep. And with this, we have like basically a three refinery follow-up straight up from Forsaken. Um, I think we're going to see a bio transition. It seems to be a, yes, the double engineering bay basically led into that. And, uh, you know, it's certainly his favorite follow-up. And then we see Seplo wisely just making a few roaches to deal with the Hellions. This is an interesting position for a bunker, considering the supply depot wall off is actually behind it. Just a semi-defensive bunker. Um, I'm thinking Forsaken, the way he's reading into this is his opponent's not going to pull it on a full offensive just yet, but he is making marauders to get ready to deal with any roach pressure that may be coming his way. The roach numbers are kind of building just a little bit. There are full eight, nine already out on the map. Any more that I might have missed? Yes, there are full nine. And I think what we're going to see uh, Seplo basically do with this is basically opt for map control. I, you know, maybe, I mean, it's like, it's it's possible that he could be going for some kind of, uh, I don't know, critical damage all in, but I, I, I at this stage, I don't think so. No, no, no. I think it's unlikely. Forsaken is having his is having his uh, third orbital command get kind of get overlapped by an overseer there. Of course, Seplo did kind of see that, and um, I'm a little curious to see. Like, I don't know. It, it's kind of like a bad idea for me to actually go through and uh, cast this game, at least from the perspective for, of Forsaken. Because if anyone actually goes ahead and YouTube searches this guy on. Uh, on YouTube, excuse me, wow. If anybody YouTube searches this guy's games that I cast, then they basically get a read into his strategy. Just kind of, uh, I don't know, giving some open thoughts. Not open thoughts, but really thinking aloud is more over what I'm doing. Never a wise, never, not, not necessarily a wise thing to do, and this is interesting. We actually have uh, Link Speed not being researched this far into the game. Fourth base being taken by Seplo, you know, he's getting ready. To enter the late stage, and um, here we go. We have pathogen glands, yes, Bing Yuan Ti Sen, in research right now. Creep tumor is being killed one by one. You know, Seplo kind of losing his map control a little bit at a time. Marauder is not really attacking these roaches. I don't know, kind of got kind of got some free hits off on those Marauders, but of course the, the Medivacs are here to heal them. And I'm not entirely sure just what we have here from, you know, Seplo. He had a, he had more than an ample opportunity to get a full surround with the Leans and the Roaches. Even Metabolic Boost didn't quite finish, and both Queens actually getting pulled at just the right time. You know, beautiful micro by by Seplo, it really is. Um, nothing, nothing short of the term. Beautiful, that is. If we check the income right now, both players just playing the macro game. Um, getting their worker count up. Yes. More marines moving out over here in this direction. It looks like this is... I, you know, this is a bit confusing. This looks like... This looks a bit reminiscent of what we would see in the early Wings of Liberty days. Like, I I don't know. Banelings accompanying Lings and Roaches. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. But um, it looks like we have Forsaken. He's going to get a full... Not a full, but basically a free-ish run by... Ooh, beautiful fungal growth. Okay, and it looks like that fungal growth was all that Seplo needed to actually deal with the Marines. 
So that's actually a pretty okay defense. Not bad, not bad. Alright, and behind this we see that Adrenal Glands is being researched, plus two uh, melee attacks being finished, plus two carapace. Well, actually both of them are about on on time at the same time. Ultralist Cavern coming down as well, so of course, yes, this is something that I, for that I forgot to mention earlier. If you see a Zerg opponent going for, uh, going for e plus one, plus one early on, and plus one, that's melee, ooh. Fourth base is in a lot of danger. It looks like it could actually get lost. Maybe. No, 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 no. Oh my god. Okay. There we go. We actually see Forsaken. He's, he's actually going for his same. I think this is. No? Maybe? Yes, he's tacking on the infrastructure right now. He wants to make sure he can uh, really get the bioplay that he needs to support um, what he's trying to do here. He's basically doing his huge remax play. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Oh, but it looks like Seplo. You know, I I kind of uh, I slightly admire this move by Seplo. You know, he's actually taking every free expo he can. He's trying to prevent his opponent from actually making it to the late game. <clears throat> but um, sorry. What I forgot to mention earlier is if you see plus one carapace, plus one melee and research in the early game, then in Heart of the Swarm it will more than lead to your uh, Zerg opponent going for. Ultralists in the late game. Medevac drop going down here at what appears to be the lower right pocket expo. And of course there's also one going into the main as well for Seplo. I'm just wondering, is he going to catch on to this? He's got five Ultras in production. Does he have any links going into the main? He doesn't. But it looks like this base is going to be thoroughly exposed and under attack. This lower right expo was forced to cancel, but I'm a little curious. Does Terran actually know about this one? No, he does not. But it looks like, unfortunately, we saw Seplo lose his Kind of lower left expo, if you will. And he's rebuilt his pocket lower right. And what about the main? Did we actually see any critical tech structures get taken down? I don't believe so. Yes, we do have a yellow health ultralisk cavern. So we're good to go. I want to say, like, right now with what we see from Seplo, he's, he's in, uh, I want to say, a relatively new good position, except for, you know, losing nine links to a single widow mine and I want to say you know forsaken he's gonna have a lot of trouble holding up here it's just hard to say oh it looks like there's a medevac drop going down here in this direction he actually thought it would be in the lower right the pocket and now we have corruptors being tacked on so that means we will eventually see some brute lords in the near future right right right, right. Where, so where's that spire at spire 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 where are you spire it looks like this base, unfortunately, was taken out. It was not forced to cancel. It was taken down. Where on earth is that spire at? Let's find that. Zerg tech, guys. It's so much easier to find. Oh, but it's right down here. And this is actually relatively exposed. There's no creep getting spread onto it. Right now, what we have to see coming from... Uh, what we have to see coming from Seplo is really opening his eyes and realizing where to attack and when to attack it. These infestors getting pulled over here. They're going to make for some free kills for Forsaken, really. Um, this Marauder, you know, infestors are armored units. Oh, and it looks like the third is actually... Yeah, it fell under attack, and that is a great SCV massacre right there. Bringing the total workers killed to 39. If Seplo... Excuse me. If Seplo can continue to go into the natural from here, you know, he's. I think he's going to gain a bunch of unstoppable momentum. A bunch of drones over here being transferred to the lower right. He... But unfortunately, I think what we have to see him do is open his eyes and realize, wait a minute, I need something that's going to be able to deal with this right now. Okay, so where are these banelings going? It looks like they're going back home as well. But behind this, we actually have Forsaken XE taking the po pocket upper left, if you will. Basically equivalent to this pocket lower right to serve as maybe a fourth base. And the links finally catch up with these Marauders and Marines. It looks like the natural will survive... For the, for the time being. And these drones are accidentally put on hold position. This base was taken down, my god. You know, it's just... It's it's a game of base racing, guys. You know? If you want to think two steps ahead of your opponent, what you must remember is... Okay, my opponent just lost that base. Now I have to do something to prevent him from taking another in a different position because he cannot immediately re-expo to that position. These marauders are getting their buff on versus this hatchery. Behind this we actually have a triple expo coming from uh, Seplo. 
But right now I want to check the income. He's actually in a bit of a critical position. He doesn't have... I don't know, where, where are the drones? He's got 36 drones compared to the, the 43 of Forsaken, but of course at this stage in the game, Forsaken is also going to have the liberty of producing as many mules as he wants. Oh, and it looks like this fourth base is going to fall. There we go. It does get retaken, and that's one to the head and two to the gut. Pocket lower right gets taken down as well. The mobility of bio forces, guys. Curses, right? At this stage, it looks like we're going to see Forsaken maybe retake an expo, but I, you know, at this stage, I, I, it's, it's kind of doubtful. You know, he's got a lot of income. His Zerg opponent ab has absolutely none, and it looks like, wow, this is drops, drops, drops galore, guys. Ah, uh, Seplo, if he, if he, you know, I don't think he's going to be able to hold this. You know, he just, there's only so much damage you can take until you're, eventually, you, you are worn out. You are dead. You are, basically, you can't do anything else. There we go. You know, the Marines and the Marauders are moving down to the lower left. They're trying to do as much damage as possible, and they are doing it quite successfully, too. Ooh, but these corruptors basically forced that bed back into a corner and took it down. Spring Girl is here off creep, so they're gonna lose health steadily until they are dead, and now we actually have Terran moving out on creep again. We need to see we need to see Seplo react to this appropriately, but he's like ah, screw it. I just I'm tired of taking all this harass. I wanna end this game now. Win or lose, I want to end this game. And it looks like he's gonna take down the upper left, the pocket upper left, but you know, I mean just look at the 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 amount of bio that's coming back here. We're gonna have Forsaken basically having freedom to move into the natural and the main as well. Base trade scenarios with Terrans are not the best, but here we go. It looks like he took the upper left and now he's trying to take down this as well. He does have one mining base. He's going to have another one relatively soon, and his income is actually miles ahead of his opponent. But this is the most critical part right here, the choke. We actually have, you know, Seplo in a position where he can't do a lot of damage. And his, his Ultralists are basically stuck dancing around each other. There are a few roaches here, yes, and he actually does survive that attack, but there's also another drop going down in the main. The spawning pool is the target of choice, the most critical tech structure, and there's actu there's actually no Ultralisk Cavern. It was taken down earlier with another medevac drop. This, ladies and gentlemen, could be the death knell for Seplo, as we are entering what seems to be a low econ situation, and we just don't see, you know, really Seplo in the position it takes to uh, remax ASAP. He doesn't have the spawning pool. That's the bit. That's the that's the craziest thing right now. He's actually not even rebuilding it. He needs to rebuild that spawning pool a s a p. Said he's continuing to focus on drones. What can he make right now? I you know I'm a little. He's making banelings, but that's with all the zerglings he has left over. It's all gonna come down to this like kind of critical engagement right here. He does have more workers than his opponent, so if he survives this, you know, he might be in good position. But at the same time, there's so many Widow Mines here. I think they're going to be able to take down the Banelings quite well. You know, quite effectively, but... Oh my god, come on, Zeplo. Make something useful happen. Like, make make, make a spawning pool, guys. You, this is the most basic unit in the game. You you need this, and with, and basically you're supposed to make it at 15 drones after you make it make your hatchery. What are you doing here, man? Looks like this roach is holding on the Zelnaga Watchtower. Oh no! And this is just... Oh my god, that is not what an effective use of Banelings, guys. No. Zeplo is basically moving up in this direction, trying to take down his opponent's... What he thought would be his opponent's economy. But, um... Honestly, like, right now, with the amount of Corruptors we actually have out on the map... He lost his fire earlier. I don't know. I, I just don't see him being able to come back from this... Forsaken actually has the income it takes to outproduce his opponent. He's going to be able to make all kinds of damage happen in the near future. 
Both players on even income, but the biggest problem is the tech for Seplo. He doesn't even have a spawning pool. He's floating so many resources, and what can he make besides just swarm hosts and festers and vipers? This is the biggest mistake that we have coming from him. Did he? Did did what? What? I, I think I know what the problem is. He finally realized that he doesn't have a spawning pool. He's like, oh, that's why I can't make zerglings. Okay, well here we go. The most critical engagement of the game. Fungal growth going down left and right. Ultralisk falling again. It's coming down to a game of micro with the low econ situation, basically. Um, I would say now is more than appropriate time, more than an appropriate time for Seplo to actually retake his natural. Maybe throw down, again, a pocket expo. But at the same time, he's got how many mineral patches here? He's got so many. He's got basically a full mineral line, but at the same time, some of these mineral patches are as low as 430. Still, as long as you can get max saturation with that, you are good to go, my Zerg compadre. The biggest problem we're going to see with Zeplo, Zeplo is actually being able to hold off against Drop Harass. He did, his opponent did send down a Marine to check for that lower right uh, pocket, and he did find it. And right now, I would say we have to see, you know, Zeplo, he's not oblivious to this. He must know that his opponent has income. He has to find a way to actually deal with it now. And one of his last Ultralists did just fall. He is on Hive Tech, so he's got to realize, wait a minute, I can make this, I can make that, I can make Ultralists. All I need is to basically throw down an Ultralist Cavern. And here we go, Infestation Pit might fall if we see Seplo not paying enough attention to what's going on here. He's How many Queens does he have? He has no Queens. His production is ab in absolutely miserable position. And there it is. It's basically just like getting worn down to the late game, guys. I mean, those Injects, you know, he didn't have... He didn't have a single Queen at the end of the game. You know, I mean, he had more than enough income to get it up, but... Um, pff, he just, he really couldn't read into it. You know, it's just like, you know, when you're getting to that stage in the game, 30 minutes in, it's hard to actually maintain your reflexes. So, hey, that's basically the situation that we saw Seplo in. If you guys liked what you saw, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. This is Breaker. I'll see you guys.